Halflings are short humans, smaller than your typical dwarf. They lack the heavy weaponry of some species, instead relying on inventive uses of technology, animals, and pacts made with spirits and golems. After facing many perils, they are a people torn between two lives that now struggle to reconcile them. They were driven from their idyllic farmland homes by marauding giant, and after generations of conflict and struggle, they have made their way back to their ancient homeland. Yet now, many halflings find themselves at odds with their old traditions, preferring instead to pursue their ancient grudge against the giants. So, halflings, this is an army that is very short, tempered. We're not in the Shire anymore. Going over the lore, in the beginning it seems like all of their farmland has been destroyed, and now they are upset about it. This is another Age of Fantasy army that is based on a model range by Mantic Games. These guys come from the unsurprisingly called Halflings Army from Kings of War. Most of the units I'm going to show pictures of come from their website. Uh, a few of them they don't have. They would just be conversions, but I did find some other stuff you could use in place of, which fits just fine. So, with that out of the way, let's start. Special rules are Artillerist. Once per activation, pick one friendly unit with Entrenched within six, which may either immediately shoot or move by up to six. This is going to be the only way that you can move your artillery pieces, because all, most, if not all of them, are entrenched plus immobile. So you can either shoot with them one more time or this is a way that you could wiggle your war machines around to get better sight lines. Aura of Luck. This is one of the upgrades for a character. This model and its unit get furious. If they already had furious, they get extra hits on unmodified rolls of five to six instead. Furious halflings are always something to be scared of. Battle Hungry. Once per activation before attacking, pick one other friendly unit within 12 which may move by up to six. This is good to have in Halfling Army because all of your foot troops are going to be slow. Bombing Run, whenever this model moves over enemy units, pick one of them and roll X number of dice. For each two plus, it takes three hits with AP1. This is going to be used on the Halflings and the Zeppelins. You'll see what that is when we get to them. Chilling, enemies get minus one to hit in melee when attacking units where all models have this rule. Mighty Horns, this model's impact hits get AP1. Sharpened Blades, this model and its unit get AP plus 1 in melee. Slayer, this model gets AP plus 2 in melee against units where most models have toughness 3 or higher. Stumble, when this model is activated, you may place it anywhere within D3 plus 1. So this has been in other armies under different names, notably Boeing from the Goblins. Surprise attack. This model counts as having ambush and may be deployed up to one inch away from enemy units. Once deployed, roll X dice for each two plus. One enemy unit within three takes two hits with AP1. That is for your very, very sneaky halflings. Swift. This model may ignore the slow rule. Take down once per game. When this model attacks in melee, you may pick one model in the unit as a target and make one attack at quality two plus with AP1 and deadly three which is resolved that it, as if it is a unit of one. Very nice rule to have when you remember it. Because it's me, if I take it, I almost never remember it's there. We'll go into those deeper as we run into them with the units. Spells. Forest Spirit. Target enemy unit within nine takes one hit with AP2 and deadly three. Lightfoot. Target two friendly units within 12. They get plus one next time they advance or plus two next time they rush or charge. This is slower than most other armies. Movement spells, because while well, these guys are small, they move less to begin with. Nightmare Spirit 2, target enemy unit within 12, it takes 4 hits with AP 2. Strongheart 2, target 2 friendly units within 12, they get plus 1 attack next time they charge. This is huge for the halflings because you have a lot of large units and just doubling their attacks, they turn into amazing combat things. Cleansing Spirit 3. Target enemy unit with an 18. It takes one hit with Blast of 9. That's an awful big blast. If you're fighting against somebody who has a lot of swarm units, definitely a good option to take. And then Luck of the Ancients. Target two friendly units with an 18 to get regeneration next time they take wounds. 
This is again something really good for the halflings, but now with the 3.2 rules, if your enemy has a whole lot of poison or rending, this almost becomes useless. So let's start at the bottom of the bottom. Townsfolk, 10 of them for 40 points. Quality 6, defensive 6, 10 hand weapons for 1 attack, and 10 throw, 10 throw stones, 1 attack each at 12 inches. And their only special rule is they're slow. Now these guys are rather up armored for what I think townsfolk would be. Imagine imagine a random hobbit out of Hobbiton walking out of his front door with a spoon and a ladle on his head. These guys are like the least armored thing I can find on the Mantic website. But if you look around, you can find some pretty decent STLs of halfling townsfolk. Warriors, 10 of them for 55 points. Quality 5, defensive 5. 10 hand weapons for one attack apiece, and they are slow. You replace the hand weapons for spears with counter, which now, again, to point it out, in 3.2, counter is really good. You negate one impact hit per counter that you have. So if you have 10 of these warriors with spears and 10 cavalry hits you, you take away 10 of those impact hits, which is really nice for the defending player. Or you can switch it out for a halibird with one attack each with rending. And in this unit, you can give them a sergeant, musician, or a banner. The sergeant gives one model plus one quality to hit. The musician gives them plus one inch of movement. And the banner gives them plus one to quality on morale tests. Now you can see with how cheap these guys are, usually the way I see everyone else run them is in, is in a combined unit of 20 warriors with spears. Especially being slow moving with the spears, they just turn into a brick that the enemy does not want to charge into. Veterans, five of them for 55 points. Quality four, defensive four. They each have a great weapon with one attack at AP2 and they are slow. And you can give them the upgrades of sergeant, musicians, or a banner. Now we're getting a little bit more into the militant halflings here. These guys have been to war and they know what they're doing. Quality 4 with a great weapon at AP2 is a good profile to have, and at 55 points for 5 of them, it is a great profile to have. For your combat damage dealing foot halflings, this is going to be where you want to be. Now, as you can see here, this is a picture of TT Combat. Um, I actually found this on the Walmart website, of all places, so I didn't know you could buy models from Walmart, so apparently you can, the TT Combat ones at least. All right, to the unit, Braves, five of them for 65 points, quality five, defensive five, two attacks apiece with hand weapons, fearless, furious, slayer, and slow. So these guys would be your dwarf troll slayer equivalent just in halfling form, you know, with a fearless, furious, and slayer. There's no option to give them any AP, but with the slayer, remember, if your enemy has toughness three or higher, you become AP two. So a combined squad of these, 10 of them for 130 points, It'd be worth to have hanging around the back and then launching them at whatever big thing your enemy throws at you. Drunks. Five of them for 65 points. Quality five, defensive five. One attack apiece with rending. Fearless, regeneration, slow, and stumble. The unit has no upgrades. Um, yeah, this kind of is what it is. It's a surprisingly fast unit with stumble. You get an extra D3 plus one inches of movement. They're fearless because they're they're too drunk to realize what's going on at regeneration, again, because they're too drunk to feel it. This is just a fun unit they threw in there, you know, season to your taste if you want them. Thieves, three of them for 80 points, quality five and defensive five, two attacks apiece with hand weapons, slow, strider, surprise attack one, and takedown. And you can replace the dual hand weapons with a throwing weapon for a 12 inch attack and just one regular hand weapon. These guys, you only get a squad of three of them. They're nice to have in the list just as a complete surprise unit because with a surprise attack, they get to come in within one inch and they can do attacks to people just when they enter the board, which is stronger than their normal attacks. So one or two squads of these just to spring up on the enemy. If they have like an artillery piece or something that wants to stay on the back line, these guys would just spring up behind them and be like, surprise! Ha <laughs> ha! Marksman, five of them for 45 points, quality five, defensive five, one attack apiece with a hand weapon, and one attack with a short bow at 18 inches. Their special rule is they are slow. You can replace the short bow with a rifle for 18 inches, one attack with AP1, or a crossbow, 24 inches, one attack with rending. 
Now, these guys are great. The only problem with them is they're short. They're not going to be able to see much. Even if you guys use true line of sight like I do, it's hard to trace a line from their eyeballs to a target just because everything gets in the way. So if you have an elevated position or a way to maneuver these guys around, like especially with the command ability to move them six inches, they are great. Halflings love throwing out damage without taking any damage in return, and the best way to do that is with a ranged weapon. Beast Riders. This is where we get into some fun stuff. Five of them for 60 points. Look at how cheap that is. Quality 5, Defensive 5, 1 Attack at Peace with Hand Weapons, and Impact 1. Now, this is where you get to put all the flavor into your cavalry unit. You can give them all lances for 5 points, which I suggest doing. You can give them all short bows or rifles if you want to have a ranged skirmishing cavalry unit. And then you get to pick what they're on and what that mount does. You can put them on a dog. That gives you strider, which means you ignore difficult terrain penalties. You can put them on a chicken, which is my personal favorite, which makes them fast because, you know, the most terrifying thing is a fast halfling on a chicken. You can put them on a pig, which makes them tougher, gives them a defense of four. Or you can put them on a goat for goat rider, which gives all of their impact hits AP1. Now that is a good upgrade, but again, with the 3.2 changes, if you're going to be fighting somebody with a lot of spears in their army, you're not really going to get many impact hits anyways. But And somehow, you'll see when it's coming up, somehow my halfling army has become focused around chickens and guitars. I don't know how that happened. It wasn't planned when I made it, but it's a thing. Golems, three of them for 115 points. Quality four, defensive four. Three heavy fists with three attacks apiece at AP1. Slow, strider, toughness three. Of course, the little guys have made friends with the big guys. You can upgrade them all to whatever type of golem you want. You can have a tree golem where they get scout and poison in melee. With the slow, that's a good way to get them up the board real fast is using scout before the game even starts. You get to go 12 inches up the board. Rock Breed, defensive plus one and fearless, and an army of squishy little halflings. It's real nice to have some big old bricks of rock walking around with defensive four. Ice Breed, rending in melee and chilling. Rending is always a good addition to a attack, and chilling means that the enemy is minus one to hit them. So for me, my toss-up was between the Rock Breed and the Ice Breed. The defense plus one versus the U or minus one to hit me anyways, I think the minus one to hit is going to be better than the defense plus one. It, that's probably why the it costs more, because that's factored into the point cost. I don't know, I don't think that deep. You know me, I'm a smooth-brained orc. But in the end, I picked the rocks, just because rocks, guitars, rock music, you'll, you'll get it. Jetpack troops. Oh god, we gave them rockets. Three of them for 145 points. Quality four, defensive four. Three fists. We're going to punch people. <laughs> I would at least have given them a stick. You call it a stick. And they all have three. They all have grenades. 12 inches, one attack with blast three. They have flying and toughness three. Good harassing unit that's going to be able to take out hordes of stuff or take on hordes of stuff with the grenades and the blast. Yeah, I mean, it's a funny, funny little unit. Halflings with jetpacks. I Sure. <laughs> and then we have a unit of mini Master Blasters. Troll Riders. Three of them. 240 points. Quality four. Defensive four. Three gunners. 18 inch shots. Four attacks apiece at AP1. And they all have heavy hand weapons for two attacks apiece at AP1. Regeneration and toughness. Three. Now, this squad is going to be able to put out more shots than a, than a 10 man rifle marksman squad. Plus, it's going to be hard to deal with. When, it's going to be hard to wound when the enemy shoots back. It's just, I, I can't get over these models. I look at them and I just see Master Blaster. Which isn't a bad thing. It just makes me giggle. Zeppelins. Because, I mean, we're already insane. Why not just go bat insane? <laughs> Zeppelins. Three of them. 235 points. Quality four. Defensive four. All of them have a rifle with one shot at 18 inches at AP1. They all have Bombing Run, Flying, and Toughness 3. Now, Bombing Run is cool. That's the one where you can fly over and you roll dice to hit people with stuff you drop from the Zeppelin. 
I just wish that they were faster because with only a 12 inch move maximum, you're not gonna get to drop many bombs before something reaches up and pulls you out of the sky. Cockatrice, cockatrice, cock cockatrice. Now, serious moment from War Boss Fitz. Do not, if there's a child in the room, do not, under any circumstances, Google images of cockatrices. I was looking for a model to put on the screen and thank God only my wife was in the room. But I had some explaining to do. With that out of the way, <laughs> Cockatrice. 145 points, quality 3, defensive 3. Sharp claws for 4 attacks and rending. Sharp beak for 1 attack at AP2 and deadly 3. Fear, flying, toughness 6. It's a chicken dragon monster. The only option is you can replace its sharp claw with an additional attack with its sharp beak and three attacks with its claw. As far as monsters go, this one's pretty cheap. Um, and you, they're fun to just throw at the enemy. Here, deal with this. Giant chicken. Just deal with it. Halfling Beast Chariot. Now, I couldn't find a model for this made by anybody. I found this image when I googled Halfling Beast Chariot. I've got no idea who makes it. It might have been somebody that just threw something together. It could be scratch made. I don't know. So if you have any idea, guys, post a comment about it. I like to let people know what things are from. But Beast Chariot, 100 points, quality 4, defensive 3, 2 attacks with a claw, Spear Crew, 2 attacks with a lance, impact 4, and toughness 6. You can replace the spear with a short bow crew for 6 attacks at 18 inches. And you can upgrade it with a goat chariot for mighty horns that gives all those impact hits AP1. A chicken chariot which makes it fast. Dog chariot which gives it a scout and strider. Or a pig chariot which gives it an additional defense of 1. Now what I would do with this if I was running the beast chariots I would replace the spear crew with the short bow crew and uh, put a chicken on it. Mostly because I like chickens and I'm thinking of dumb ways to make it work. But a fast ranged chariot run around the sides. Six shots coming out of it at 18 inches. That's going to cause some headaches. And at that point we are what? 25, 35. You're 135 points. You could do a lot worse for those 135 points. Harvester. 130 points. Quality 4. Defensive 3. Two attacks with whirling blades which is rending. Impact 6, Regeneration, and Toughness 6. This is just a upgraded version of a Chariot. Again, we got the Master Blaster, but this time he's bringing the whole kitchen sink in front of him. That's a cool concept, you know, especially because their farms are supposed to be burned. What else can you use the Harvester for? Go run some people over with it. The Iron Pig, the evil version of the Trojan Horse for the Halflings. 280 points, Quality 4, Defensive 2. Six attacks at AP2 with its bladed tusks. Tusks. And then it has a smasher gun. Six shots at AP1 at 18 inches. Fear 2, impact 6, toughness 9. This thing, as far as it goes in the halfling army, is a beast. This would anchor an entire battle line for the halflings. You know, it's going to be getting, it's going to be getting a good amount of shots going in, especially paired with your marksmen that are running around behind, beside it. And then you're going to have six impact hits plus six additional hits with AP2 on top of it. This is, this is a, I would say a fire and forget because you just run this into the closest enemy you can see. This is going to be a fire and stick. It's going to go in there and it's going to stick in the fight for a while, especially with its defensive two. It looks great. I would run it, but it's it's not an iron chicken. Oh, now I gotta make an iron chicken. Oh, dang it. Halfling Artillery starts off at 60 points, quality 5, defensive 5, and it starts off with a volley gun, 6 shots at 18 inches with AP1. It is entrenched, immobile, and tough. Now, I don't think I've ever really talked much about entrenched, but what entrenched does is if you don't move, which you are immobile, you're not gonna move, you are minus two to hit with ranged weapons outside of nine inches. Yeah, outside of nine inches now. The upgrades you could take. You could do a hot pot, 24 inch, one attack, blast six, indirect, and poison. You're throwing last night's leftovers at somebody trying to give them uh, food poisoning. Rocket battery, 24 inch, A2, AP1, blast three, indirect. You're throwing last night's dinner at them <laughs> with a rocket strap to it. Bolt thrower, 36 inches, 
one shot AP3 and deadly six. Whenever something really big is coming at you, throw a tree at it really, really hard. Or a howitzer, 36 inch range, two attacks, AP1 with blast three and indirect. We gave them rockets and we gave them jet packs. Let, just, just give them cannons. Give them artillery cannons. <laughs> Uh, these are all pretty cool. These are all pretty cool um, upgrades to your artillery. Choose whatever you think you're going to need. It's all going to end up pretty cheap. I mean, what's the most expensive? A hundred points. A hundred points for a howitzer. In my opinion, isn't even the best one. If you, you're fighting somebody that's got a lot of big stuff, take the bolt thrower. Ninety points. Uh, it only hits out of five. But if you take one of those artillerist guys, you sit it next to it, you get two shots a turn. Now on to our characters. Champion. 35 points to start off with. Again, these guys are cheap and tiny. All the points are in the upgrades. Quality 4, Defensive 4, Heavy Hand Weapon, 3 Attacks, AP 1, Hero, Slow, and Toughness 3. Now again, his base stats, absolutely nothing to write home about. For his upgrades, you can give him the Aura of Luck, which him and his unit get Furious, and if they already had Furious, they get extra hits on an unmodified roll of 5 or 6. So if you put this guy with the Slayer unit with the Braves, they can make them even more insane to throw at stuff. Town Chief, you can give him Battle Hungry, which is once per activation before attacking, pick one other friendly unit within 12, which then may move by up to 6. This is good, unless if you don't have something you specifically want this character to do, that is a good upgrade. Just giving the halfling units the ability to move around a little better is going to always be good. Feast Master, Sharpen Blades. This is the one where he gives everybody AP plus 1 in the unit. If you're going to be in a veteran unit or if you are going to be in a beast rider unit, that would be one to do. Uh, because there's nothing worse than running into the enemy and doing nothing because their armor saved them. It's better to pay the extra 30 points to just punch right through it. Then the army standard bearer gives the character fear of three. That would be good to put on a character who's running around on his own, like on one of the big beasties that we're going to get to. This way you're going to be able to force morale checks easier. So now for his weapons, you replace the heavy hand weapon with a heavy halberd, dual heavy hand weapons, a heavy lance, a heavy spear, or a heavy great weapon. Whatever unit you put this guy with, just, you know, match up the weapons and you'll do fine right there. Now for the fun part, what are you going to put him on? You can use a pig for extra defense and one impact, a goat, which takes away his slow, Impact 1, and that impact gets AP 1. A dog, which makes him unslow. Strider and impact 1. A chicken, which takes away the slow, gives him fast, and gets one impact hit. A big chariot, which is going to give him defense of 3. Two attacks with a claw, 4 impact, plus 6 toughness and swift. So at that point, at toughness 9, you can't put him in a unit. He's going to be on his own. A winged hound, which was the guy, the picture in the last one, is going to give him defense of three, six attacks with its bites with AP1. It's going to be flying. Swift just means it loses slow, and it is going to be toughness nine. And cockatrice, four attacks with rending, one attack at AP2 with deadly three. Fear one, flying, toughness plus six, and swift. So if you take a cockatrice with the army standard bearer, you are going to be at fear of four, which that has got to be the scariest halfling I have ever heard of. Then we come to the smaller character. A leader with quality five and defense of five comes to three attacks. With a hand weapon, he is hero, slow, and toughness three. You can take assassin for takedown. Once per game, he gets to make one attack at quality two with AP one and deadly three. Feast master which again is the Sharpened Blades, everybody gets plus one AP. Shaman for Caster 2, which this is the only way you can get to cast all those cool spells we talked about at the beginning. And this is where your Engineer lives, where he can double the number of shots of your artillery weapons, or he can take the immobile unit and make it mobile for a turn. You're going to be able to replace the hand weapon again with dual hand weapons, great weapons, halberd, lance, and spear. Whatever unit he's in, try to match up the weapon. You don't have to. I just do it because it makes my life easier when I'm rolling dice. You upgrade him to have tw uh, Toxic Poison, which is three attacks at 12-inch range with poison. You can take a sniper rifle, one attack at 30 inches with AP1 and the sniper rule. And you can also put him on a dog, a goat, a pig, or a chicken. 
So that's it for the halfling units. Um, the way I see most people make this army is just with a lot of dudes. Because everything is so cheap, the halfling army turns out to... The, end, the halfling army tends to become a horde type army. Which it is possible to not be with all the upgrades, like the beast riders, the golems, the troll riders, cockatrices. You, you don't have to be a horde army, but the options there, just kind of like with the goblins. They were cheap enough to where they could have been a horde army, and I kind of built a horde army. But in this one, it's a mixed bag. And in the army we got coming up, you'll see what I'm doing. I don't. I didn't focus on any one thing, except for chickens. <laughs> Again, why? Why did I make chickens? I didn't plan on making chickens. They just, they just happened. But that's enough for my rambling here. The army that I'm going to pull out, this is all 3D printed. And it was all 3D printed a while ago. And I've removed the files from my computer to save space. But I'm going to try to look through to figure out who the manufacturers for these were. Or who the designers for these were. And just put up on the screen to let you know. Some of them I got from Thingiverse as a free file. The, the leader I know is from Thingiverse. Uh, everything else, I think, has a company attached to it. So bear with me on that. Uh, but without further ado, here is the battle report. Hey everybody, welcome to the garage again. It's a nice balmy just above freezing out here. And today we are doing the focus on the halflings. These are my halflings that are powered by chickens. If you can see, we got the giant chicken for the commander. We got a squad of guys riding chickens. And then there are feathers and chicken stuff all over different units of the army. Let's go over every unit one by one, and I'll show you the stats. Hey guys, this is me in the future while I'm editing this. I realized I screwed up. The army list here has two veteran units, and in the game, I only used one. So, uh, yeah, that happened. In the army today, we have two units of 10 marksmen, all armed with bows. And you can see the guy there with the chicken on his helmet. A squad of 10 veterans, all armed with great weapons with AP2, and they're being led by a leader who is one half of Halfling Tenacious D. He is a bard for today, who is going to be a caster level 2. We have 20 townsfolk, all armed with farming implements, and they're going to be able to throw rocks at the enemy. And they are also led by the second half of Tenacious D. He's going to have the skill to give a unit within 12 inches the ability to move six more. How Tenacious D got wrapped up in an army of halflings and OPR, I haven't the slightest clue. There are two squads of three golems. They're going to be the rock golems for today, which gives them an extra point of defense, and they are fearless. We have two halfling artillery hot pot launchers getting ready to throw whatever was left over from last night's dinner at the enemy, hopefully to give them food poisoning. We have one beast rider unit of ten. They're going to be on chickens, and they are being led by a champion with the skill to give everybody in the unit plus one AP. Then finally, leading the army is our hero, on Cockatrice. He's going to be armed with a great lance, and because he's all on his own, I don't think I gave him an extra ability. He's just going to be running around smacking stuff with his BBC, or Big Black Chicken for you degenerates out there. Taking them on today are our victors from the last game, the Shadow Stalkers. The walking nightmares are going to be fighting against the little halflings. This is our table for today. The mission rolled up was King of the Hill. That's why you see the objective sitting underneath the entry door to the guardhouse. The narrative of this is going to be the Shadow Stalkers have started moving into the halflings' territory, so they are scrambling to recover the gatehouse on the border. Our deployment today is going to be frontline. So it's just going to be a meeting engagement between both of the armies. And for King of the Hill, we're going to see a whole lot of combat going on within that gate. The Halfling seems to have set up their army with all of their golems on the front line, ready to go in hot. With a unit of beast riders ready to sweep the flank with all of their marksmen and artillery pieces in range of the objective. The Shadow Stalkers seem to have the plan of just beef forward as all of the butchers are deployed as close as possible to the objective to get there first. Reaper's on the flanks, and the giant looks like he's going to take a slight detour 
but should get to the objective by turn two at the latest. So the armies are all set up. We're going to roll to see who goes first. Halflings are going to be going first on turn number one. First activation, the chicken riders make their way out of the deployment zone, making sure to stay out of charge range of the enemy. The shadow stalkers deciding not to be shy move a unit of butchers directly onto the king of the hill objective. The unit of townsfolk move up to fill the hole that the beast riders just left, and our wonderful leader turns to the golems, decides to play them a little tune. This inspires the golems to move six inches forward. The cyclops, not amused by the musical overtones coming from the other side of the board, moves forward to put himself on the objective. The other unit of golems moves towards the objectives and the butchers on it. The second unit of butchers moves up behind the first one, even with a difficult terrain, they are able to catch the back of the unit. The unit of veterans move up, and our tenacious caster there attempts to cast Nightmare on the butchers, and proceeds to roll a one. The reapers on the edge of the board slither forward 12 inches. The unit of marksmen in the back move forward. They go to string their bows, but their short little heads can't see any enemies. The unit of reapers on the left flank of the shadow stalkers move down off the hill to challenge the beast riders. The halfling marksmen on the hill see something in the distance, so they fire off with their bows into the reapers. Even with the Reaper's stealth ability, the Marksmen were able to get three sixes. And two of the Reapers failed their armor saves. The final unit of Reapers and the final unit for the Shadow Stalkers this turn moves behind the Reaper unit that got shot to reinforce that flank. The Golems that were inspired previously find themselves just within charge range of the Butchers on the objective, so they launch into an attack. With their rock fists, they're only able to do two wounds onto the butchers. The butchers then surround the golems in order to get the most amount of attacks possible and absolutely rip the rock golems apart. The Captain Cockatrice Rider flies over the defensive wall and nestles in next to the Beast Riders on the chickens. The two pot launchers fire at the butchers in the center. Somehow, miraculously, even with the stealth, one pot lands. It takes one wound off the butchers, killing the one that was already wounded. The butchers in the center trying to repeat of what happened in the last combat charge into the golems that are moving up. They're able to do four wounds, taking out one golem and wounding a second. The golems then attack back and are able to do three wounds to the butchers. The golems take a morale test and pass. The cockatrice rider takes a flying leap over top of the guard tower, crashing into the cyclops on the other side. Between the lance, the talons, and the beak, the cockatrice is able to do six wounds to the cyclops. The cyclops then turns and attacks back, only able to pull three wounds off the cockatrice. The giant needs to make a morale test and fails. Rolling the five dice, he only rolls one, three or lower. The reapers that were previously wounded charged into the chicken squad. The chicken's armor held and they were only able to take out one of the riders. The riders then promptly surrounded the reapers. And even with the ensnare skill, with the amount of attacks coming in, something was going through. They end up killing two of the reapers. The final reaper there has to make a morale test. He fails the morale test and then rolls a one, crumbling into a puddle under a cloud of feathers. The veteran unit charges into the butchers. Before they attack the bard, he attempts to cast Strong Heart. And he's able to pull it off. So the unit of veterans and the unit of chickens are going to get plus one attack. As the veterans attack, invigorated from the heavy metal coming from their bard. They are able to cut down the butchers, causing eight wounds total. Then they're able to, with their three-inch wiggle after they kill a unit, get just outside of charge range of the second unit of butchers. The second unit of reapers that were behind the ones that charged into the chickens also themselves charge into the chickens, hoping they can get better luck. 
Underneath the blades of the reapers, feathers fly and six of the chickens go down. The chickens attack back, and with the extra attacks granted to them by strong hearts, they are able to cut down one and then pass their morale test. The halfling townsfolk move up past the defensive wall, and our bard in that unit turns to serenade the marksmen. The marksmen then start grooving to the music and move six inches across the board. Then the townsfolk all take rocks out of their pockets and throw it at the reapers fighting their chicken friends. One of the townsfolk is able to find the target and hit one of the reapers hard enough in the head to where it goes down. The Shadow Cyclops chooses to activate and continue fighting the cockatrice that's in its face. Swinging wildly with his bell on a stick, he's unable to get any hits. With his stomp, he does get one hit, but the cockatrice armor holds. The big black chicken fights back with everything it has. Feathers flying, it is able to get one hit with its damage three beak. The Cyclops fails its armor save, but with its sense magic is able to save one, taking him down to two wounds. The Cyclops with its fear of two is overruled with the two wounds and the fear of one from the Cockatrice, so he fails his morale test and then promptly rolls Snake Eyes, causing the giant Shadow Cyclops to disappear into an inky puddle. The Chicken Riders finally take their turn to activate on turn number two. They've been fighting so much you would think they'd activated by now. But they attack into the Reapers that they are stuck in combat with. Between all their attacks, one hit is able to go through, which the Reaper fails his armor save. The Reapers fight back, causing no hits. They then fail their morale check, but are able to roll high enough that nobody else disappears. The unit of Butchers still remaining after seeing the Cyclops go down are looking for vengeance. They charge into the Black Cockatrice. <laughs> and under a massive flurry of blows they're able to do nine wounds and in a puff of black feathers the cockatrice is destroyed the remaining unit of golems move forward to seal the breach in the wall looking out at the reapers the reapers seeing no better option charge into the golems and with their number of attacks they're able to rip the rocks apart piece by piece with the shadow stalkers activations all complete both units of marksmen move forward Plus, both of the pot catapults fire into the Reaper unit. After 20 arrows and two cauldrons of slop. Only one Reaper goes down. At the beginning of turn three, both piles of ambushing tentacles come on the board. First activation of the turn, one of the tentacle piles charges into the veteran squad. The tentacles are able to kill two of the veterans, and when the veterans fight back, they're able to put two wounds onto the tentacle pile, causing a tied combat. The halfling town folk move forward, and they're able to throw some rocks at the tentacle piles, causing two wounds. The reapers fighting against the chickens swing away. The two reapers were able to kill three of the chickens, but the champion on the chicken that was leading the squad is able to cut down the two reapers in return. That captain, head inflated with delusions of grandeur, sprints around the guard tower and slams into the brutes. His attacks do absolutely nothing. The brute squad casually lashes out and bisect the chicken and casually wander onto the objective. The squad of veterans activates. They will be attacking the pile of tentacles. But before that happens, their caster is going to attempt to cast Nightmare on the Reaper squad. And he fails. The combat between the veterans and the tentacles is very uneventful. The veterans are unable to hit. The tentacles were able to get a hit, but the veterans' armor stops it. The second pile of tentacles charges into the rear of the marksman squad. Showing an outbreak of competence. They are able to kill off four of the marksmen. The marksmen attack back are unable to do any damage to the tentacles, then proceed to fail their morale check, and they are now stunned. The second unit of marksmen move forward, and they're still outside of the stealth range of the reapers, but they fire anyways, and are able to score one hit and one kill. 
The butchers from the other side of the objective activate and they charge into that marksman squad. Because they are fatigued, they are only able to hit and kill three of the marksmen. And surprisingly, the marksmen are able to do one wound back to the butchers. The marksmen then fail their morale test and become stunned. Pot flinger number one attempts to fire at the butchers and misses. The final unit of reapers charge into the veteran squad. They are able to cut down four of the veterans. The veterans then attack back, unable to do any damage, and then pass their morale test. The last pot flinger fires off at the butchers and misses. Then the last unit to activate is the marksmen that were pinned by the tentacles. They are going to recover. First activation of the final turn, the Reapers go back into the veterans again. This time they're able to kill two. The lone veteran that's left is unable to do any damage, but then our rock star caster invokes the power of rock and ends up cutting down one of the Reapers. The veteran squad then passes its morale test. They won't be intimidated today. The townsfolk move forward to attack the pile of tentacles that has been giving their veterans trouble. While they move forward, our bard in that unit is belting out some sick tunes. Inspiring the unit of marksmen to move away from the brute squad. The townsfolk then attack the tentacle pile, causing six hits and four wounds go through. The lone remaining tentacle pile attacks back, unable to do any damage. It then fails its morale test and rolls a one, causing it to melt into a sludge pile, allowing the townsfolk to move on to the center objective. The unit of brutes charges into the townsfolk. They're able to cut down six. The townsfolk then, inspired by the tunes being played all around them, Surge back into the butchers. They're able to take two wounds off of them, causing one of the butchers to fall. Then, inspired by their bards, the unit of townsfolk pass their morale test. The unit of marksmen that are fighting the tentacle monsters launch themselves into combat. They're able to score four hits, and the tentacles are unable to save. The tentacles attack back, doing absolutely no damage. They then fail their morale test, losing three more wounds. That lone tentacle then is able to move around and attack the townsfolk, thinking if it could just win combat, it can make him take another brick test. It charges in and does absolutely nothing. The townsfolk then attack back, taking the final two wounds off the tentacle. The music will not be stopped. The two pot launchers fire at the remaining reapers on the board. One hit is able to take them out. And that brings us to the end of the game. In the King of the Hill scenario, the townsfolk take it all. Lining them up before the battle, I would not have thought the halflings would have had a chance. But it seems with the power of rock, anything is possible. So that's the end of the game, everybody. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. Leave me a comment. Remember to drop a comment in the Q&A community post. I'm getting a couple of good questions that I'm going to have fun answering. Look for that sometime in the near future. The next game, again, is not going to have a poll. We are going to do the Fey Petal Courts from the Dragon Strappers Lodge. They're going to be fighting against the Halflings. We're going to see which short stack is going to be able to pull it off. And then after that, the winner of that is going to fight against the cat folk. So thanks for stopping by. I hope you all are having a good week. And we'll catch you next time in the garage. See you later.